This is the Scoop for Wednesday. I'm Sean Canan with the WMNF News Headlines. Books are being challenged in schools across Florida. WMNF's Chris Young reports members of the right-wing group Moms for Liberty have even called police on librarians in Florida's panhandle. Judd Legum is the author and founder of the popular information newsletter and broke the story. He said he received information that complaints were being filed against librarians. So he sent public records requests to authorities in the panhandle. I received a body cam video which showed two people uh, who are members of Moms for Liberty, the Santa Rosa County chapter, telling uh, a sheriff's deputy that there were several librarians who they believed were committing felony offenses by making this uh, one book, a a popular young adult novel called uh, Storm and Fury, uh, available to a 17-year-old student. The governor says this is child pornography. It's It's a serious crime. The book contains minor sexual themes and was recommended for readers 14 to 18 by Barnes & Noble. The Santa Rosa Police Department referred the matter to school authorities and closed the case. However, on another complaint, Milton Police Department nearby started an investigation. That really could have a chilling effect uh, on librarians as as far as what books they are going to offer, knowing that they could be the subject of a a criminal complaint that there's a group of people out there who are going to law enforcement who are somehow obtaining these books and you know trying to convince someone uh to to charge uh librarians state law bans distributing a book or other materials with sexual content if it is harmful to minors a standard established by supreme court precedent for wmnf news i'm chris young The Florida House also nearly unanimously passed a bill that would expand restrictions on state investments in businesses with ties to Iran. The House voted 100 to 2 to approve the measure, setting it up for a final passage by the Senate as soon as today. The bill would expand a 2007 law that requires the State Board of Administration, which manages Florida's massive pension fund and other investments, to divest from what are known as scrutinized companies with links to Iran's petroleum industry. State Representative Representative John Snyder sponsored the bill that would expand investment restrictions to other types of industries, such as the financial, construction, textile, and manufacturing sectors. We are doubling down to send a clear message that Florida will not be in the business of funding terrorism. The federal government has had extensive economic sanctions against Iran for decades. The bill stems from the October 7th attack on Israel by Hamas. That's a Palestinian militant group backed by Iran. Soon after that attack, NPR international correspondent Aya Batrawi was in Israel reporting on these attacks and on Israel's deadly response. She was a guest yesterday on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. Gaza has been through a lot. This is its fifth war or conflict since 2008. So if you're a 15-year-old child, this is your fifth war or something close to it in just your entire lifespan. The psychological trauma, in addition to this, cannot be described. And I struggle with words to try to explain and understand as well, like the trauma to children. I saw one video that I think really, really captures some of the trauma that children in Gaza are facing because they can hear the bombs. They can hear a constant sound of drones humming overhead, Israeli aerial surveillance drones and and, and armed drones. Over a million and a half people or something like that, I think that's the latest figure, have been displaced from their homes. 200,000 people's homes have been destroyed. So, So people are living, thousands of people, in these small UN shelters, thousands at a time. You know, there's no clean water for a lot of them. There's not enough food coming in. You know, Israel had put Gaza basically under full siege with just a small trickle of trucks, aid trucks being able to come in through Egypt. And even then, most of those trucks, almost all of them can only distribute to certain parts of Gaza in the south. They cannot reach hundreds of thousands of people still in the north. People simply cannot evacuate. They, they say there's no safe place to go. Even across the southern Gaza Strip, there have been bombs, there have been attacks, people have died. That's NPR international correspondent Aya Batrawi speaking yesterday on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. You can watch the full interview on our website, WMNF.org. Today it'll be mostly sunny and hot. Highs will be in the mid-80s. Tonight mostly clear, overnight lows in the mid-60s. Tomorrow mostly sunny and hot with highs in the high 80s. Expect more dry weather at least until Saturday.
I'm Sean Canaan with the WMNF News Headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.